Oh, good morning. It's all good. Um, I was late today. I'm the late one today. Four minutes late. Um, I left my other phone in the car, and the car is far. So hopefully I didn't leave it like visibly shown. It's kind of tucked up, or no one comes, because uh, they do be creeping on the come up in the bay. Car theft. It's, it's no joke. So. Here's all my, I give it a little bit more time today. Oh. I have the phone to do the shout outs too. Yeah, I'm late. I'm late today. Late. Late. It was supposed to be a mini service again, but because I do want to get on the news, there's too much stuff going on, man. But oh. I wasn't able to. Uh, Scripture after scripture after scripture will come. And then they'll be like, man, there's a full-on service. But while we wait for people to get on, there were some crypto uh, exchanges was trying to put in an application to become a bank. And they made them... Oh, this ran over at their... They made them withdraw their application. And there's new banks that were trying to become banks started withdrawing their applications. So they're making, it, they're making it to where you won't see no new banks come up. Because new banks won't be in debt. New banks won't crash. Because they don't have all these mortgage-backed securities. They won't have all these subprime loans to where there could be a bank run. And so new ones coming up on the scene. There was a lady that's fighting because she wants to open up a bank. And um, it will be no fractional reserve. And so she'll just make the money off of like credit card loans, um, uh, off of uh, interest, you know, just basic loans. No, I take 100% of the money and I dish it out into mortgage backed securities and buying bonds from the government. And so if there's a bank run, I'll have the money there. And they, they made her withdraw her, uh, her application. So they're making it to where there's no more new banks that's going to come on the scene. In the meantime, First Republic and all these other banks are shutting down collapsing and so it's going to get consolidated and centralized until the banks that do exactly what the government wants them to do jp morgan chase Citibank, all the top top dogs will be working for the government uh so it's going down um anyone that could get dual citizenship get dual citizenship anyone that could um, get their passport get their passport it, it's definitely going down um shalom um, and, and, um, they're even trying to pass the law to where, um, uh, people that have crypto, um, uh, they, they want to know, they want you to register your cold storage. I don't think that's going to pass, but you got to come in like you're a business, like you're a, I forgot the word, the term they use for it. But anyways, you got to come in as register as some business. So essentially, they want to know what everyone has. And that's the thing about like crypto is that you, you could be your own bank. And this is why you need dual citizenship. Because there's other exchanges out there. There's other countries that you could spend your money and roll, you know. But uh, I'm not going to get too much into that. But there's always um, ways to go about 
living your life without being controlled. That's the best way I can say it. Um, uh, it took a while to find the link to show up. Oh, yeah. I was wondering because it said no, no people was watching, and sometimes the Facebook will come up on private, to where no one could see that I'm, I'm recording, and so sometimes I gotta put it back public. So praise the Almighty. Um, definitely thank the Almighty for today. You guys ready to get into the book? We got a lot of stuff to cover today. So I was supposed to bring the news. But I was supposed to bring the news. Oh, yeah, we're good. But, uh, yeah, it's just too many scriptures popped up. So, let's get it. How much time we got? Other phones in the car. Hopefully no one sees it. So, I won't be able to do the shout-outs today because that, that phone's in the car. But, welcome to true Hebrews United of the Almighty Yeshua. It's your beloved holiness instructor, disciple, Sir Joe Sargent. About to get into the book as usual. Definitely give all honor to the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and all that is in therein the author and finisher of our faith that knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning kind of like brother vince tells stories i'm gonna start off at the end and run that back but uh definitely thank the almighty give glory to the almighty through his son yeshua mashiach um yeah through his son yeshua mashiach again um all the all the ministers out there i'm supposed to be linking up with a minister i might get a picture with him or something maybe take a little video uh his his believers of the way they got a, they're mainly, a, I think they're based out of L.A., but they got a little a district out here, a little, uh, you know, congregation out here, too. So they're growing pretty good. Praise the Almighty. Um, for, for so, uh, a little bit of what we, we agree on, I don't know enough to really refer them as brothers or sisters, per se. You know, we believe in the Sabbath and, you know, stuff like that. We have some similarities. I don't know full on their doctrine. I just met them like twice. You know what I'm saying? We talked a little bit, you know, surface conversation. So I'm going to meet up with them, see what they're about, and bring some stuff about getting out of Babylon and uh, consistency plans for your congregation. So hopefully it goes all well. Um, we'll see what's up. But all the ministers out there that's really holding the standard, you know, getting people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel. Enlighten them to build a relationship with the Most High, dealing with the things of the heart, like we're going to deal with today. Um, also, all the brothers and sisters out there across the whole planet, you know, I always say I'm not the only one. I'm just one piece of the puzzle, and there's brothers out there pressing the line, suffering for his namesake. You know, maybe I, in the UK, they're pushing that, you know, hokey pokey stuff real hard, where you can't even leave the country unless you get that. That, it's going to get tight. It's going to get real tight. Australia's like that, too. Real tight, you know. Um, so anyone living holy in Australia, they were sending people to camps if you refused to get the hokey pokies in the beginning. I Meaning they'll take you and you go stay at a camp for two weeks. Look that up. They were putting you in a concentration camp because you refused to get the hokey pokies. So imagine those brothers trying to live holy and live righteous. And... and People in, in the U.S. are spoiled believers. I'm not saying you're not saved, but like the it says, if you can't run with the footmen, how are you going to keep up with the horses? This is light, light tribulation, real light. Wait until real stuff comes, comes, comes up. So all you brothers out there keeping the Almighty's commandments, statutes, judgment, precepts, and ways, I love you guys. Keep standing. I hope you guys are are filled may the almighty give you food and resources whether you're in africa whether wherever you're at provide encouragement um i know that they're going through some stuff i'm talking about brothers i've never met and never will know until i get into the kingdom hopefully they're all right and um they make it into the kingdom and they they don't they stay steadfast and also they don't drop a standard you know to feed their family or whatnot so with all that said it's being done Let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. Um, also, uh, um, while we do that, uh, go ahead and give me um, oh uh, the title of this this uh, of this message was "There's no such thing as a strong and independent woman or a strong and independent man." There's no such thing as that. Um, that, that will be the title. 
and dealing with that. There's no such thing as that. Um, so, while you give me Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy 32, there's no such thing as a strong and independent woman and a strong and independent man. And this kind of goes deep because I'm not really going to deal with the CIA part of it towards the end. Um, but I'm going to deal with the mindset and how this mindset, if you can control the mind, then you can destroy a nation, you know, rather through social media, rather through mainstream media, rather through education in the school system. I'm not going to deal with that as much. I'm going to deal with the scripture aspect of it. And then to hopefully these elder women teach the younger woman and these older men teach our younger men. And that's how you secure the next generation. So let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we're going to start at verse uh, 28. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 28 let's get it it says for they are a nation void of counsel neither is there any understanding in them oh that they were wise and a they understood this that they will consider their latter end now think apply this to where we are today it says, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight except their rock has sold them and the Lord has shut them up? It says, the Almighty is not with you. But how, how? It says in other scriptures, one could chase a thousand and two could put 10,000 to flight. And that is with the Most High, right? So, even in the Most High... What you're able to accomplish with two people is 10 times greater than what you can accomplish by yourself. Because you say, oh, if I have one person, I put a thousand to flight. But if I have two people, essentially, you put 2,000 to flight, right? You double, double the people, you double the outcome. But no, you get five times more the outcome with two people five times more so what does it really profit of being strong or independent see you could only really pick one as a man or a woman you could only pick one you could only be independent or you could be strong you could be independent and chase a thousand and oh i'm i'm independent i'm in it because there's no strong and independent you just got to pick one. Oh, i'm strong or i'm independent i put a thousand people to flight well us two we're codependent. We put 10,000 to flight. We're strong. We're strong. We're codependent, but we're strong. You're independent and you're weak. Just think about that. You cannot have strong and independent together. That does not work. Male or female. But let's keep going. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 9. Now this is the Bible. It says two are better than one. This is why we should be pushing our women to be married. This is why we should be pushing our men to be married. Because two is better than one. If you want the best for your, your nation and you want the best for your people, then you should push them to be married. Now, I'm not saying you have to be married, but I'm saying what we're doing right now is not working. It's not working. And I'm even dealing with some of the women in the in the word that say they believe and say shalom and say and, and know that they're Hebrews. 
they still have a strong and independent mindset. They may not say it or they may not live it how the world lives it and showing their cleavage and twerking and doing all that stuff and oh I'm a boss bay and all that stuff. They may not do it that way. But even with their post and how they view men, it's almost like a you're in competition. If you notice about strong and independent women, especially dealing with our nation, they're in competition with the men. I'm not in competition with the women. I'm trying to find a woman to be a teammate. And a woman should not be in competition. The Hebrew woman should not be in competition with the man. They should be trying to find a man to be a teammate with. They shouldn't be finding a man to compete with. And, oh, I got my own car. I got my this. I'm doing this. I don't need a man. I just want a man. And that mindset is opposite. And that's why it's destroying our nation. But let's keep going. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 it says two are better than one because they have a good reward of their labor ten times more ten times more I started a moving company I cannot do that moving company and maintain a 40-hour job by the efforts of me handing out flyers on Sunday for three hours going up and down stairs and me working a 40-hour job and my wife answered the phone calls and doing the dispatch and we made a lot of money there's some days where uh, cash we're getting cash five six hundred bucks a day we get a big job two three hundred bucks after we pay the employees we're making like an extra thousand thousand bucks a week eight hundred bucks a week depends sometimes it's just a small apartment sometimes a three-bedroom house takes two days you know it depends on the job you know it's ups and downs right but it took two of us to do that and we accomplished far more than what i would have done by myself because there's no way i could have ran a moving company by myself and worked a full-time job because the moving company didn't make enough at that point to pay for all the bills and some. And so we were able to accomplish with two people far more. Even if she worked a part-time job, that moving company made more than if she took a part-time job. And why would we do a full-time job so no one's watching our kids? What's that mean? Anyways. So, it says... For if they fall, the one shall lift up his fellow. But woe unto them that is alone when he falleth. It says destruction. For he have no other to help him up. And that's the thing about being strong and independent. What happens when you're depressed? And there's no one to talk to. What happens if you have thoughts of suicide? What who was there when those women drive off the cliff and kill their kids? Where was the where was the husband at? Sometimes it happens when they're married, you know, where the husband comes home and kills their wife and their kids or something. Maybe she fought, found out she was cheating or something, her kids wasn't his and whatnot. It, it does happen, but who's there? It says when you get sick and, and, and these women chase these degrees and they get to a point and when you're sick and you're 40 or you're 50 or you're 60 and you're going to die alone and there's no one to comfort you because you fell, whether in sickness, whether depression, whether suicidal, whether whatever, and you what run to the pharmacy to take some antidepressants or they prescribe you some drugs that's killing your liver, what are you going to do? Because your soul, you took it as a badge of honor to be strong in it. This goes for your man too because... You men don't want to realize that you're not as powerful until you have a wife. But mainly to the women. And I'm going to get to this right now. But what are you going to do? It says, war unto you when you fall and you don't have no one to heal you up. There will come a time when you're sick and you're going to wish someone could get you. You're so sick to where you can't get up and go get a glass of water. And imagine when you're by yourself in your house. And you're so dehydrated and you're throwing up and you can't even clean your throw up off of you. You can't even get up to just throw up and move the throw up. You just got to turn over to the other side of the bed and hopefully you don't throw up on that side of the bed. And there's no one to tend to you. There's no one to give you water or clean up your throw up bowl. They don't think about that. They just think, oh, I'm strong and independent. I don't need no man. This and this and this. There's nothing this and 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 this. Yeah, you say that when you're young or you say that when you're healthy. You say that when your body's good. But right here it says, woe unto you when you fall and there's no one to lift you up. What happens when you find out you're a diabetic and they cut off your leg? And that job you have, you don't get no more. 
what happens if they cut your job and now that income you thought you had, you don't have no more, and you're the only income because you're strong and independent? When you can have a husband or have a wife that's there and say, all right, I'll, I'll pick up the slack. Let's keep going. It says, for if they fall, uh, it says, two are, uh, again, if, if two lie together, verse 11, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? I've seen so many videos where the woman chased, I'm chasing the bag. They chase their career, chase their degrees. I make six figure this and this. They got this big house. They got this nice house. And they're alone. And they cannot compete because you, ch you chase your main goal was to chase the bag and to chase what uh, the American dream. And you got that house. And you got that nice car in the driveway. And now you're 30 or 35 or 40 and you want to try to find a husband. But guess what? You can't compete. You can't compete because you're 34 and you're competing against someone that's 24. Because anyone that's your age could get younger. So you chase the bag and now you're alone. Look up in Jamaica. All these women have degrees and they say it's a shortage of men in Jamaica. I'm talking about the women that chase the degrees. It's a shame that the ones that have the mindset of wanting to be a wife or wanting a companion... These will be the ones that work at McDonald's. These will be the ones that don't have a degree. And they are happily married. But the ones that chase the career and chase this, they get their degree and they get that nice house and they get this and they got, they got, they got the bag. And guess what? You're alone. And you look at these people that you, in your mind, oh, I look better than her. Or, oh, she's, she's, she just works at Taco Bell. Or this and this and this. And you see the husband come in a nice car doing this and that. And you see that they're happy and he gives her a hug, kiss, or picks her up or whatnot after work or whatnot. And you're like, man, I want that. What did I do wrong? It's because you were focused on being strong and independent. And other women were focused on trying to be a co- Other people wanted a teammate. And you wanted a competitor. You wanted someone to compete with. And they wanted someone to be with. Let's keep going. Proverbs 11. Oh, let's finish 12. Uh, 11. Uh, uh, 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold code is not e easily broken. And if one prevail like sickness, your partner can help you out. If one prevail like unemployment or job loss, your partner can help you out. Your partner can help you out. Let's keep going. Give me Proverbs 11, verse 14. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Even in the almighty, you need counselors. There is no king without a kingdom. When you have a king and he sits at the table, he'll have a counselor dealing with the war, a general. He'll have another counselor telling you what's going on with the people, dealing with all the people. Are, there's no food. There's this. There's this. People are getting robbed when they travel from this city to this city. Okay, send guards out there. Make sure the passage is safe. Hey, we know that this country just invaded this country and they invaded two other countries. They may be coming for us. We need maybe do patrol. And they're giving counsel to the king so he can make good decisions. And as a husband, as a wife, you're supposed to counsel one another, right? Let's give me one another counsel. It may be a, a, a man sometimes is one track minded and then your wife could give you a different perspective. And same thing, a wife could be in her feelings or an emotion and a husband could give rationality, facts, statistics, logic, and they balance each other out. They balance each other out. Like a perfect example of, uh, you know, I teach the word and whatnot, and there's areas I excel with uh, at teaching my children, right? But when it came, I think one time I had to t do homework with them and teach them math. And they're like, we don't want dad to teach us math no more. We're good. we good. That's just that that type of teaching and that type of patience and that type. I'm, I know I'm not good. I couldn't work, be a good teacher in a high school. 
maybe wood shop or something like that you know what i'm saying but and there's other parts i excel at and and uh we balance each other out but let's keep going go ahead and give me <laughs> let's deal with this give me first corinthians chapter 11 now i'm gonna have to we set the foundations now we're gonna go first corinthians chapter 11 i'm gonna go a little bit faster too When you look at a lot of these single parent mothers, well, I'm going to get to the man, don't trip. When you look at a lot of these single parent mothers, they wear it like a badge of honor. Like, I don't need no man, I'm raising my kids, I this and this, I got my own car, I got my... And it says they glory and they shame. They don't even know how much they don't know. They can't even compute how foolish they sound when you weigh their mindset to the scriptures. They're bragging about being something that the Almighty rejects. And they're taking it like it's something to... This is why they say they glory in their shame. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Now let's get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 5. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Amashik. So you need to be followers of him, right? Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them unto you. Praise the Almighty. Let's keep going. Shalom. Hadlock. Um, it says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Amashik. The head of every man is Amashik. And the head of of the woman is the man now keep in, that says the man the man but let's keep going and the head of Amashiach is the almighty right every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonors his head but every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonor her head for that is even as one as if she was shaven so my main point is this but i would have you know that the head of every man is Amashiach, and the head of every woman is the man and the head of I'm a sheik is the most high. So, how can you be strong and independent if you're supposed to have a head over you? Isn't that counterproductive? Isn't that counterproductive? I want to be strong and independent so you don't want no headship. You don't want no head over you. Why would you want that? This is what the Almighty created. This is the structure and the guidance that he set up. And, you, and I go ahead. I'm going to give you five seconds to use this excuse. Go ahead and use it. I'm waiting. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead. I know you thinking, oh, well, I'm not married, so I'm a sheik is my head. I'm a sheik is my head. Oh, so you want to skip the chain of command. See, but there's something wrong with I'm a sheik being your head. Why that cannot happen? Because there's two other filters with that. There's two other filters with that, and let's get into that. You will always have a and have a head, be a head over you. Go ahead and give me Numbers chapter 30. This is their mayor. Oh, I'm a sheik. It's my head. I don't have a husband. I'm a sheik. It's my head. It says it's the man, but whatever. Numbers chapter 30. Let's start at verse 3. Numbers chapter 30, verse 3. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Almighty and bind herself with a bond, being in her father's house, in her youth, and her father hear the vow and her uh, her bond, wherefore she hath vowed her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, and all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherefore she hath bound her soul shall stand. She says she's going to fast. She says she's going to do this to the Most High that's going to stand. Look, right? So her father's her head. But if her father disallow in the day that he hear it, not, uh, not any of her vows or all the bonds with her, she shall, about her soul shall stand. The Almighty shall forgive her because she have, the father have dis, disallowed her vow. Check that out. This is how much power the father has over her. And if she had at all a husband when she vowed and uttered out of her lips, wherefore she had bound her soul and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand and her bonds wherefore she had bound her soul.
But if her husband disallowed her in the day that he heard it, then she shall make the vow which she have vowed, that which she have uttered in her lips, wherefore she bound her soul of none effect, and the Almighty shall forgive her. Now, the father is her head, and then their husband is her head. So even if you didn't have a husband, you have a father. Well, you're supposed to, but we keep having these bastard kids out of wedlock, so the fathers aren't in the home. And the father has headship over you. But let's keep going. I got, because you're going to try to sneak through the cracks. There's another filter for you. And you're not going to get through this one. But let's keep going. But every vow of a widow or the, hers divorce because you messed up and you cheated on your husband and he gave you a bill of divorcement. That's fine. You still slipped up and you repented and you came back to the Almighty. Um, Wherefore, with he have bound her soul, it shall stand. See, you're supposed to get, and the reason why you still have the father is we're supposed to get married out of the house. You're, when you see a woman that's 34 and they're living with their parents, the world will be like, how are you 34 still living with your parents? If, if it's a man or a woman, if he's not married, that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be, he should probably have 60000 in the bank account. Like, yeah, you know, once I meet a girl, I'll buy a house and then bam. He's supposed to be married out. Married out of the house. So she should be under the father's headship until she gets married out. So she gets married out. There's nothing wrong with your son or your daughter staying in your house until they get married out. That makes sure they stay in the way. That's a good thing. The world paints that as a bad. Now, if your son's there playing video games all day, doing nothing, no, 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 no. That's totally different. If your son's doing drugs and smoking weed and he's gluttonous and a wine bibber and, he, you know, and he's a sluggard, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if he's on his purpose, he's in school or he's starting a business, he's saving up money, he's stacking, he's in a real estate, whatever, right? And he's that's how it's supposed to be. You marry your children out. So she's under her father's headship because he has the same power to disallow vows as her husband. Then she's under her husband's husband. Oh, well, you know, I don't even know who my father is or I came in a single parent home. My mom raised me this and this and this. I don't have a relationship with my father. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go with this next filter. Well, you're still going to have a man have rule over you. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of the Most High, Whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversations? Why would you need to consider that? Because he might be saying to do or to not to do certain things. So these ministers are your watchmen. These ministers have the rule over you. There is no time where you see a woman that is independent of rule under a man. If it's not under her father, it's under her husband. If she's not married, she needs to have a congregation and she has a watchman over her soul. There is no time that where she's just fully independent with that. If she, if you see a woman that is not married, that does not have a congregation and does is not under the rule of her father, you stay away. Just stay away from them. They're without rule and without bounds. Just run away from them. They have no, there's no standard. There's no submission. There's no subjection. They don't obey anything. Let's keep going. They are fighting. You know how some people just fight authority for the simple fact of it's just authority, not because it makes sense. Have you seen someone fight They're like, hey, we're going to do it this way and they do it the opposite way, even though that way is better. But just for the fact that it's just to go against authority or to go against direction. So they'll do something that does not make sense just for the fact. Same thing with today. Oh, I'm strong and independent. The majority of like, women complain how men are. But for the last 30 years, you know, and we'll deal with the CIA and everything. For the last 30 years, these men have been raised by single parent mothers, the majority of them. So how are you complaining of the men today, the generation of the men today, that you raised because you wanted to be independent? And yes, I know, I get you. There's some dirt bags. There's some dirt bag dudes out there. I'm, I'm, we're going to get into that. But we got to deal with the women first. And then we'll go with that. So there's no way you're going to say 
oh, I'm strong and independent and be a woman, not in the almighty. The sinners could say that. One, if you're independent, then you're not as strong. You're weak. I'm not going to say weak because you could be strong, you know, but you're weaker. You're not as strong. I'll say that. You're not strong. You're just normal, right? You're chasing a thousand. Me and my partner, we chasing 10,000 every year. You're chasing a thousand every year. So next year you got two, we got 20. Next year you got three, we got 30. We doing it. There's no way around that. It says two is better. The scripture says two is better than one. So what is the purpose of being independent? So that means you're not as good. You're not as good. You're lacking. Let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep going. Give me John. John chapter 10. This is why, especially you women, you need to have a congregation. That means you don't have a watchman, you don't have a husband, and you're not under your, you don't call your dad and your dad can't give you counsel and tell you what to do, what not to do. So you have no leadership. And then you try to say, hey, Christ is my head. No, that's not true because he says, obey them that watch over your soul. Oh, uh, wait up. I forgot. Hebrews. Let's get deeper. Chapter 17, uh, verse 17, same chapter. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, right? Let's read verse 7 again. Remember them that have rule over you, who have spoken on you the word of the Most High, whose faith follow, consider the latter in their conversation, right? Because they might give you some counsel and you need to consider it. And don't just say, oh, well, uh, no, you need to consider that, right? Now, verse 17, obey them. Uh oh. Does it say, obey your husband as unto the Almighty? Weren't you supposed to obey your father? Now, what's this say right there? Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your soul as they must give an account that may me do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable unto you. Now you're supposed to be obeying your ministers. And I'm not telling you he's got to micromanage how you spend your money, how you raise your kids. What, it, no, dealing with things of spiritual matters. When you're saying, hey, you know, you go to your father and say, hey, father, this dude wants to, I'm thinking about marrying this guy, I want to, no, nah, he's not a good pick, this and this and this and this, or I checked his Facebook profile, or this or this, or he doesn't have a steady job, or wait a little bit longer, you're supposed to respect the counsel of your father. You come to your minister and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about considering marrying so-and-so, well, this brother, he just got baptized, and he doesn't seem, he's not really feeding the homeless, he doesn't seem this. He seems more interested into you and to marry you than actually growing in the Most High. Just wait a couple of months. Just see if he stands. Most people that get baptized, they'll fall away within the first three years. Kind of like a marriage. They'll fall away. If they make it three years, they're probably going to be strong in the Most High. You know, the first three years is real hard. You got to water and you got to prune and you got to protect that plant so it could grow and get its roots good. But they usually fall away in the first three years. So, you should post to see your minister and say, all right, the minister's not hating on me. He just wants me to wait. He's just not recommending this brother for me to marry because of A, B, and C. Let me sit back and consider and let me see if those red flags manifest or let me see if that brother develops himself and he grows out of that. But, oh, I don't want to hear it. I'm strong and independent. And they go to their ruin. How many of these, you've seen them on Facebook. They marry a dude. Within four months, they're, they're separated. And I, you'll ask them, hey, did that dude have a congregation? No. He just said shalom and wore fringes. Because he doesn't have no rule. He's without boundaries. Let's keep going. John chapter 10. Gospel John chapter 10. Verse 1. Verily I say, verily, verily I say unto you, he that uh, entereth not in the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth the, some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. So he's saying there's a sheepfold, there's a way you need to go, and if you try to go another way, you're a thief and a robber. Because you're trying to say, these women will say, oh, this is how you know they're strong and independent, but they're trying to serve the Almighty, but they still have that world mindset of strong and independent. Oh, Christ is my head. I don't need no, they'll say, I don't need no church because the body is without walls and Christ is my head. I don't have a husband. Christ is my head. Oh, so you want to circumvent a husband because you're not married. I got you on that. 
you want to circumvent, you want to skip over your father, and you want to skip over the ministers. Because you don't want to, so essentially you want to skip over the chain of command. So if you're allowed to skip over the chain of command over the man, because the head of every man, uh, every woman is the man, whether it's your father, or whether it's the ministers, or whether it's your husband, you want to skip the chain of command and go straight to Amashiach. So then that means I could skip Amashiach, and I could go straight to the Most High, right? Because you're allowed to skip the chain of command one rank, right? You could skip one one level. So then that means I could, I don't need Amashiach. All the men on this planet, we do not need Amashiach. We just go straight to the Most High. We don't need them. Because if the woman can skip the chain of command, then I can skip the chain of command, right? Because that's the logic, and that's the logic you're making by saying, "Oh, Christ is my head." No, no, no. You have a minister. You have a father, or you have a husband. No. Sorry. Nice try. Nice try. Let's keep going. So it says he's a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own the sheep in the name uh, by name, and he leadeth them. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but they will flee for him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. And the parable spake Yeshua unto them, and they understood not what things that they were he spake unto them. And said Yeshua unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Back to, uh, back to uh, one. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not in the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth some other way is a thief and a robber. And that's what you do when you say Christ is my head as a woman. That's what you do when you refuse to have a congregation or to submit to your husband or to submit to your father. You're trying to climb another way to be saved, to find salvation. It will not work. The scripture does not support this strong and independent mindset. Nowhere in the scripture supports that. In, in the scripture support that. Let's keep going. 1 Timothy chapter 2. That's why I tell you guys, I don't recognize people as brothers and I don't call them brother. If they don't have a congregation, I don't call them a brother or sister. I don't, I don't do that because it's opposite of what the Bible says. I, I don't because my thing too is, I'll stop on that because there's two scriptures. I want to get sidetracked, but there's a scripture why I'll deal with that at the end. Genesis, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. I don't want to get too sidetracked. For there is one, one Yah, and one mediator between the Almighty and man, the man Yeshua Hamashiach. So there's only one way. There's a door. It says Hamashiach is the door of the sheep, right? And, there, and if you climb any other way, you're a thief and a robber. So you're trying to skip the man and go straight to Hamashiach. But there's no way I could skip Hamashiach and go straight to him. He's the door. If I try to skip him and go another way, I'm a thief and a robber. There's no way you're going to get to Hamashiach. But through the man, as a woman, the head of every woman is the man. You're not going to be under, to say, I have no leadership and Amashiach is my leadership. That's wrong. And you hear it all the time. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 16. This is when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and thy sorrow I'll bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to the husband, he shall have rule over you. So once again, husband has rule over you, the watchman has rule over you, and your father has rule over you. Once again, father has rule over you, husband has rule over you. The, the ministers of the Most High have rule over you. You are, how are you going to be without rule? You're, you're essentially trying to get out the curse. I'm going to get out the curse because I'm just not going to be married. I don't need no man strong and independent. And I'm just not going to be a part of the congregation. So no one has rule over me in that aspect. And I'm just going to do my own thing. I just won't have kids. So I won't have painful childbearing. So I'm just going to get out the curse. What are you doing? Why, why do you even say you believe in the Bible? 
At that point, why? This is why I keep telling you, this is why I don't teach a man having more than one wife, because I will prove you don't even believe in the Bible. By the time the end of that Bible story, I will prove that you literally do not believe in the Bible. But let's keep going. At this point, why do you even try to serve him? Why do you say shalom? Why do you even do anything? Because you're trying to be without rule. You're trying to make your own way that is already written down. He already set up. That's like me trying to be a doctor and don't study the books and just figure out how to do open heart surgery and find my own way. When this has been taught, tried and true, time after time, year after year, this is how you do an open heart surgery. This has been practiced on cadavers, practiced on dogs, on pigs, on successful in humans, and this way has worked. And yet you want to find another way to do open heart surgery other than the way that worked. And then when you do it, all you have is uh, failed, uh, failures, failures, failures. Our generation is nothing but failed men, raised by women. Because you guys want to be strong and independent, and you keep having these kids out of wedlock, these bastard kids, and I'm getting to the man, don't trip. You keep having these bastard kids, and you do raise, trying to raise a man as a woman by yourself, and then what are you producing? Your results is failing. The results prove that what you're doing is not working. If you say you do open heart surgery, and I and these people do open heart surgery, and they have a 95% success rate, and you have a 5% success rate, why are you keep doing that? Why do you keep wanting to be independent when it's destroying our nation? That makes zero sense. Let's keep going. So you're like, oh, you're dealing with the woman. When are you going to deal with the man? When are you going to deal with the man? I'm dealing with the man right now. I don't have my phones. I was going to do shout outs right now. I'm dealing with the man. Let's get into the man now. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to deal with the man as hard because typically when men uh, get a nice career and they got money, typically they want to get a wife and have children and start a family. You don't find any videos of men saying, I'm strong and independent. I got my own car. I got That's a woman thing. You find men getting out their curse by wanting to be lazy. They want a woman to work and pay half the bills. They want to do least. They have uh, no ambition. They don't want to start a kingdom. They don't care about their name being blotted out. They don't care about building a legacy. They go the lazy route. They try to, because the, the curse for them is thorns and thistles by the sweat of your brow. So they try to be lazy out of the curse, and the women exalt themselves and don't want rule over them, and the man should have rule over you. So they're getting out of their curse by wanting to be strong and independent. And I, I don't need no man, because you don't want no one to have rule over you. You don't like authority. So you're fighting authority with the strong and independent and trying to get out your curse. Men try to, the punishment for men is different, so we get out of our curse a little bit different. So I'm going to show the value of a woman and how you're not as strong because you need a woman but i i'm not saying it don't happen i typically don't see men brag oh i got my own car i got my own job i don't need no woman i don't really see youtube videos that I, I, I don't really see that stuff i'm not saying it don't exist but it's typically women that brag about not needing a man not men men want a family men want to have kids i'm not talking about pookie and ray ray having kids out of wedlock i'm not talking about how the future and all these people run around and pregnant i'm not dealing with them you know what i'm saying let's keep going give me uh genesis chapter two genesis chapter two oh by the way uh don't let them deceive you. Did you know 50% of men are uh, without kids? Of Hebrew men are without kids. So you're going to say men are running around having all these kids and not taking care of them. The majority of us don't even have kids. Oh, Also, too, I told you the statistics the other day. Only one out of ten men have kids by multiple women. But one out of five women have kids by multiple men. So that tells you statistically that the women are going after the same Pookie and Ray Rays because the majority of men don't have kids by two different mothers. One out of every five women have two. So what does that mean? 
They're going after the same douchebag, cockroach, bottom feeder, crab, shrimp, pig, men. They're going after the douchebags. They're going, and so when you're going to say, oh, you this and this and that, and they want to bash black men. No, why won't you bash? Why are you using all black men and bashing the minority, the 20 or 10% of men everyone is going after? Say, hey, those 10%, those six feet tall, six figure, this and this, six pack, whatever. Oh, bash those. Don't try to incorporate when the majority of them uh, aren't even having kids out of wedlock. Like, the majority of them don't have kids. The majority of men only have kids by one woman. But then you try to incorporate all a black man just because you chose the bad one. If I see this girl tweaking, uh, twerking and doing all, showing all her cleavage and I chose to have a kid by her. And then I'm mad because she won't let me see my kid and this and that and because we're not together and this and she weaponized her kid against me. I chose that one. You you could clearly see the red flags and I still, oh, she's pretty and I chose to go after her and then I'm, re- and you're supposed to feel fitty because I'm reaping the outcome of that? Like, you didn't see that she's not a good mother? You didn't see that she's not a grimy woman? She's not a bottom feeder? It's like, nah, nah. One time, you get one pass. Man and woman, you get one pass. You can make one kid that was a bad decision. But now that you have a kid on the way, and you got to be in that kid's life for 20 years, you shouldn't make mistake number two, a mistake number three, a mistake number four. How would you look at someone's intelligence when they got three DUIs? Oh, man, you got a DUI? Oh, man, you got to be more wise. It's 2000 bucks. You got to go to school, this and this. You got a DUI. If I see my buddy, you got a DUI, like, bro. Then you get your say, like, bro, how, how do you get a second DUI? You couldn't just call an Uber? You couldn't call a taxi? Like, how do you how do you get two DUIs? You just didn't learn? And then he gets a third. Like, bro, you got three DUIs? Now I'm starting to question your IQ. Because how do you get three DUIs? So then why don't we quit? Bro, how do you got three kids by three different baby daddies? And you ain't with not one of them. Not one of them are with you. So now you're a single parent mother with three different baby daddies. You didn't learn from the first mistake. You didn't learn from the second mistake, and you didn't learn from the third mistake? How much birth control is out there? How much plan B's? And yes, us in the almighty, we don't do birth control because, I mean, contraceptive as far as hormone and putting pieces of metal in you and playing around with pills and messing with hormones, we don't do that stuff. But I'm talking about these women out there that's destroying our nation is like, why are you so careless with your body? Why are you opening up your womb so often to so many different dudes? Why are you opening up your womb? You're letting anybody stick anything in you. And you, that doesn't bother you? That does not bother you that this, your consequences could destroy a kid's life. You, A guy sees a girl and she's a drug addict or this and this and you will go procreate with that? And now this kid is born with almost no chance of success? So you literally just destroyed a person's life just because you wanted to. And now you got this woman pregnant and now this kid, she she ain't, she don't, she barely got a job. She just this and this. She leaves her kids at the home to go to the club and let mama babysit her and you will still go mess with her. Knowing that she's a grimy and everything. And now, oh yeah, she got my kid to be a gang member, to be a drug dealer, to be a prostitute, to be a whore. You just destroyed this kid's life. This kid is in like negative 10. This kid will just have to climb and build the self-esteem and get out the hood. And not saying it's impossible, but the probability is so low that you pretty much destroyed the kid's life. You brought a kid in this world with zero chance. And that's selfish. Selfish on the woman's part, selfish on the man part. You create ghettos. You create drug dealers by your fornication. By You create it by these women if you see he's on the block and you see he ain't about nothing and you see he ain't going nowhere quit opening up your womb to deadbeats and scrubs i don't understand why you why are you so careless with your body like i i don't understand if for you women why would you let someone just go ahead and produce a kid with you and you're he's gonna be gone you're stuck with the kids. Some of you guys don't even know who the kid's father. You don't even know his name. It's sad that we as a people, I'm getting sidetracked. Bear with me. We as a people 
when I seen uh, Jacob, when I seen Jacob, he seen this girl named, called Rachel. And he liked this girl, and he worked seven years before he could taste her. And you guys give it up on day one of a date. <coughs> something, something a man will work seven years for, you'll give it up on one date. Is that how far we degrade it? Is this is where we became? Think about it. Let's keep going. Let's deal with the man now. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Almighty said, It is good not for that a man should be alone, but I will make him a helpmate for him. So, these men out there, I don't really know too many men that says, Oh, I don't need no woman. But, but, you need to value that the Almighty seen that it was better for you to have a wife and not be uh, in and of yourself. You need to understand that, that you will not have any power or any strength without a wife. If you want to be in your strongest form, it will not be independent. It will be with the wife. Let's prove it. Scripture number one. Give me Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Verse 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Kamari. Thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. You don't even start to be strong until you have a child as a man. And that's not having no kid, having no wetlock, and having no bastard kid, because the Almighty said, a bastard shall not come into my congregation to the tenth generation. So don't go and try to say, oh, well, I have a kid. Was it a bastard? It was a shame to have a kid at a wetlock as a man. It was a shame to have a kid as a wetlock as a man. They didn't even, they, a bastard couldn't even get their inheritance. You will have a man have a wife and have a kid, and even though he has a firstborn, but that firstborn was a bastard, they said, you don't get an inheritance with us. You have no right to the inherit what our father has because you're a bastard. You're born at a wetlock. Look it up. That's in the Bible. Back to the ruleship of a father, by the way. Did you know a father, New Testament and Old Testament, could choose who the daughter marries? Whether they could say, hey, daughter, you're going to marry this person, and or you're supposed to bring the person that wants to take your daughter on the date. That, that man is supposed to see the father before they go on date number one. And you don't give it up on date one either. So, and the father says, no, I, you can't date my daughter. That power is in the Father's hands. You're always under rule. Let's keep going. So, you don't even get strong until you have your children. Let me show you something. Give me Judges chapter 12. Judges chapter 12. Verse 9. And he had, uh, let's go, and after him, Isban of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had 30 sons and 30 daughters whom he sent abroad. And he took $30 from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. So there's other scriptures where he set them up as princes. So he became a person in power and he had major sons because he had more than one wife and whatnot or maybe he had 30 sons by 30 dollars yeah he had more than one wife because you 30 sons and 30 dollars that's tough so but he sent his sons 
in some scriptures i'm not gonna get to it he made his son governors over cities so you have a kingdom like united states and the presidents or whatnot and there's california this and different states and there's mayors but you have rule over all but imagine if uh the president of the united states had 50 sons and he made his sons mayors over every state see the reason why you will not be powerful because if you're a goal getter and you strive to set up a kingdom and a legacy for your family let's say you're running a grocery store do you think your sons have the success of the grocery store in your best interest or do you think some employee that just wants a paycheck wants their 40 hours eight and skate who do you think has the best interest of your vision your wife and your sons and your daughters your children or some random employee so your kingdom doesn't even grow until you start having kids and I'm not dealing with no bastard kids like I said it says a bastard don't even come into my congregation. That means if you had a bastard kid, they can't even come and bring their sacrifice to the temple in the old covenant. So he, he is not establishing bastard children running around having kids out of wedlock and saying, yeah, I'm building my kingdom because I had all these kids out of wedlock, even though I'm creating ghettos. I'm creating the future drug dealers, the future pimps, the future gang members. The future sex traffickers, yeah, I'm producing those because I keep having kids out of wedlock and I'm not being a part of their life. I'm just running around creating ghettos. Who wants a ghetto? You might as well be a drug dealer because that's what you're doing. You're creating them. You're creating the next generation of drug dealers. The next generation of people that's going to be in prison, oh, those are single parent, parent families, single parent mothers. Because these men want to run around and think they're masculine because you're having kids. But you built no dynasty. You have a dynasty of drug dealers. Good job. You have a dynasty of daughters that end up twerking and being prostitutes and being strippers. Good job. Because you have all these kids out of wetlock. Good job. Way to go. Yeah. So manly. Yeah, real manly, right? That's what men do. We yeah, I got ten kids. Yeah, but your daughters are strippers and the other ones sell drugs. One's locked up. Good job. Good job. Yeah, way to go. Really making a difference here. Right? Good job. You're really you're really excelling and building our nation for the next generation for us to be greater and not degraded. Yeah. Let's keep going. Give me Isaiah 56. Last two scriptures. I'll get into some notes. Isaiah 56. Verse 1 through 5. Thus saith the Almighty, keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness uh, to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it and keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keeping his hand from doing evil. Neither let the son of a stranger that have joined himself unto the, uh, to the Lord saying, uh, the Lord ha have separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, the one that does not have a wife, say, I'm a dry tree. Now, why would he say that? If he's a eunuch for the Most High, why would he feel that way? Because the Bible says two is better than one. But let's keep going. He's going to get a reward, though. For thus said the Lord to the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold, even unto them I will give my house within the walls a place and a name better than the sons of the daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name and shall not be cut off. So he says, hey, I'm going to give you a special reward for that. You know? I'm going to give you a special reward for that. But that shows in this time, he has no strength. Because he has no children. And the best way to have strength and have strong children is Proverbs 24. Verse 10. Or not, not Proverbs 24. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 10. It says, Who could find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? If you have children by a virtuous woman then you're building your kingdom in a solid foundation now let's read this 
her heart, her husband doth safety trust in her, so that he have no need of spoil, not blowing the money, gambling, making, spending the money on uh, trivial things and, you know, mismanagement and whatnot. Let's keep going. I'm not going to deal too much in this. I'm going to go fast, though. Uh, she will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. She seeketh wool and flax and willingly with her hands. She is like a merchant. She bringeth forth her uh, her, her uh, food from afar. I'm going to jump over. But verse 26, she opened her mouth with wisdom and her, her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not lazy. Her children rise up and call her blessed and her husband is also praised in the gates. Many daughters have done virtually, but she excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fear the Almighty shall be praised. Give her the fruits of her hands and let her let her own works praise her in the gates. If you have a woman on your team that fits this, fits this, when you read this, how can you not fail? You got a solid team member on your on your squad. What can you not conquer if you have a virtuous woman? What can you not avail? The only enemy you will have will be yourself. If you're lazy and you have a powerful woman, then you put out her flame and then you guys go nowhere. But if you have a go-getter man and then you have a virtuous woman, what could stop you? You're you're chasing the, you're putting those 10,000 to flight. You're there are times there are times right now it's not that time. There is times where me and Mrs. our engine is oil tune up, oil change, transmission, spark plugs we are, we are on point. We are unstoppable. And there's times where it's like, let me jump the car. And the stuff just is just not clicking. We're kind of in that, just not clicking right now. But you just not chasing much. You're not getting far. We're just not getting far. But when you guys are in sync, you and your teammate is in sync, whether it's a basketball team and all five of you guys are in sync and there's no argument and stuff in, within the basketball team or this or that or pass me the ball and they don't want to pass the ball or whatnot and you guys work as a team, you guys win the game. <clears throat> and that's the main point. These women, these men, these men should be seeking a wife so they could walk in their full power. These women should be seeking a husband so they could walk in their full power and their full strength. You counsel each other. Hitting some notes. The parents equal each other out. The parents equal each other out. And they bring something different to the marriage, to each marriage, to make them grow. And they bring something different to the children. The children, I teach my son how to be a man, and he sees his mother and sees the qualities in her, and that's the same qualities he looks for in a wife. The mother teaches the daughter how to be a woman and he sees the dad cutting the grass or the dad fixing the car or doing this and going to work coming back investment leading uh, uh, family meetings disciplinary and she sees the qualities in him and when she finds a husband she's going to look for those qualities in a husband and so we balance each other's out this is why a woman can't say a real man should do this and a real man should do this if they came out of a single parent home, they don't know what a real man is. See, my daughter is going to know what a real man is from zero years old all the way until the, till they leave the house, till they get married out. Because they've seen a real man in the home. They're not, how are you going to say a real man should and a real man should be and the real man don't do this and they do do this and don't. But you've never, your mom has showed you somewhat how to be a wife, but all you out of single parent home, you're, all you've seen your mom do is be independent. So what is she creating you to do? She's creating you as a woman to be independent because she was, you came out of a single family home. So how do you know what a real man is? You know, you've seen guys come in and out. Maybe she's going to a club or whatnot, but you've never seen a real man 24 seven. When you get home from school, a real man is there. When you're sick, a real man is there. When he comes home from work, you, you've never had a real man in the home to observe from year after year after year since you were learning how to crawl all the way till you graduated high school, you observed a real man in the home. So how do you know what to look for? They were doing this podcast and this guy, uh, he slept with the mother and the daughter. But he said when he was, he was a predator, when he looked at young girls' Facebook posts, he'll, he'll target 16-year-olds and 18-year-olds, right? He'll target young girls. But he says anytime he's seen a young girl post a picture with the mother and the father, He'll skip over him. 
whenever they had a strong parent, a strong foundation, she, he won't even try to get. He'll only target the ones that have daddy issues. He may target the ones that have a picture with the mom, but if the father's not in any of the Facebook pictures and the father's not in the home, he says, that's my target. And he'll go after them. He'll go after them because there's no father. See, me as a father, I'm willing to die and go to prison for the rest of my life for my kids. Like, it, once they get married, once they get married, I'll talk to the dude, like, you know, hopefully he's serving the Almighty. I'm like, there will always be a bar between me and you because you, you, you're married to my daughter. And, and, and even if I got old, I'm always going to have some some dudes on where, hey, I'll pay him a couple thousand. Hey, I want, I want dude in the hospital. He hit my daughter. He did this. He cheated. He did this. Oh, put him in the hospital. Don't kill him. I want him in the hospital. There'll always be that. I don't care if I'm 80 years old. I'm always going to be able to make a phone call to protect my daughters. That's my obligation when I have my daughters. I'm always going to, if I can't do it and I'm not strong enough to do it, oh, I'll make a phone call and there's be five or six people that would do it for me. There's never going to be a time where I don't protect my daughters. There's never going to be a time where I don't protect my son. There's never going to be a time where I don't protect my wife. And if I have to go to jail for 25 years or whatever, protecting my children and protecting my wife, and so be it. Because I didn't go as no murderer. I didn't go as no pedophile. I didn't go as no thief. I didn't go as no drug dealer. I didn't go sinning against the most high. I went protecting my little ones. And so these, these men, these predators know if they have daddy issues and daddies, they're easy pickings. They're easy prey. And so this whole strong and independent, you're setting your daughters up to be easy pickings to be a stripper or to be a prostitute or have a pimp over them. Easy pickings. Because you want to be, because you take being a single parent as a badge of honor. When it shows that parents in two parent and home succeed more, the numbers don't lie. So we are basic training. We are supposed to be the basic training for our kids. I need to train him to be a husband by the time he is 20 years old. Age of accountability when he could get baptized. I don't believe in no baptism as no kid, right? Age of accountability is 20. If you choose to get 20 baptized when he's 20, praise the Almighty, right? When, when he's at that age, he went through basic training. Now, what is basic training? Basic training, you learn how to march, you learn how to shoot, you learn how to throw grenades, you learn how to wear your uniform. You have the basic training. You're there for three months or six months, whatever, in your field, and then you go to your unit. Now, would you send people straight out of basic training to the heatest battle? No, they'll get their butt whipped. They don't have the experience. They have the training, the basic training, but not the experience. Then you go to your unit, and you learn to master these things, right? But out the gate, when they come to the unit, when they come to their unit, they know, okay, this guy, he knows how to shoot. He knows how to throw grenades. He knows how to march. He knows how to duck. He knows how to use cover. He, okay, he has the basics. Okay, let's perfect this. So out the gate, my son needs to know somewhat about cars. He needs to know how to drive. He needs to know how to troubleshoot. He needs to know how to be an overcomer. He knows how to stand up for himself. He knows how to make eye contact. He knows how to shake hands. He knows how to manage money. He knows how to invest. He knows how to do a business. He's not experienced as me as a father. He doesn't have the experience. But the basic training of being a man out the gate, I set my son up for success. So if he gets married at 20, it'll be tough for him because he don't have experience. I would prefer 28 or 30. But if he did get married at 20, let's just say he has the basics to have a successful marriage. And on my daughter's side, she has always learned to be submitted to a man. She knows how to cook. She knows how to be a problem solver. She knows how to be a nurturer by raising her younger brothers or having pets and whatnot. She learns how to do all the womanly stuff, how to be clean, how to hygiene with her own body, how to do all this stuff to where out the gate, if she got married at 20, which I hope is not that young, but if she got married at 20, she will be have all the tools needed to have a, be a successful wife. She's already wife ready at the gate. When they come for basic training, they are a soldier. They just don't have the experience. When they get 20, they should already be a wife. No, they're not married, but they're already wife ready. They're already husband ready. That is our goal as parents. So, when you come at a single parent home, 
as a mother, how are you getting him ready to be? How is he going to be husband ready at 20 when he had no man there? You're not even a single parent home does not create husbands and wives. It does not do that. It's impossible. You as a daughter, you've seen your mom be not submitted to any authority other than her job, which you're not there to see. So she's not submitted to nothing because she's a single parent your whole life. So you don't. How are you going to learn how to submit? How are you going to learn how to obey your husband? How are you going to learn that? After 20? And then you wonder why you have failed relationship after failed relationship after failed relationship because you don't know how to submit. These guys come up with no fathers. Who becomes their fathers? The gangs. Who becomes their fathers? The rappers rapping about chasing women and doing drugs and this and this and look at my drip and that and that and this and this. This All these people are influencing this young man instead of the father. And then when he's 20, do you think he's husband ready? Do you think he's husband ready at 20? Of course not. And this is how a generation degrades and degrades and degrades. But let's keep on. So their arguments. Uh, they'll say, oh, you know, a title is nothing. I don't need to be married. A title is nothing, this and this. That's because they're without rule. They just want to freestyle their life and do whatever feels good. Because until you're married, that means nothing. The whole, oh, we're dating and oh, another thing. Oh, you got to try the cow before you buy it. No, no. All in the Bible, you didn't try the cow until you married the cow. How about you learn how to deal with your relationship? It's like people that have to do drugs to have a good time. Why can't you go to the beach and be sober and enjoy the beach? Why can't you go camping and enjoy it without being drunk? Can't you enjoy life without having to be intoxicated? So me and you can't enjoy each other's company unless we have to be intimate every time we meet up. How about you go through arguments and there's no such thing as makeup intimacy when you're in the engagement or, uh, uh, or espouse or in the dating. There is no all makeup we can't use that as a patch. It's proven that the longer you wait before intimacy, before marriage, the longer your marriage will last. So the majority of people that wait until they're married to be intimate, their marriages last. But the sooner you have it, like if you were in, you were intimate on date one or date two or date three or even date seven, and then so you guys keep messing around, then you get married, the chance of your marriage surviving because you made that the center of your relationship. Instead of making you talking things out and having chemistry and dealing with things and working through things prior to marriage. And then that is the icing on the cake. You're making intimacy the cake. And this is why all these kids are born out of wedlock. Because intimacy is the cake. You're advertising intimacy as the cake. This is why they only show butt pics. That's their only asset they have because they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to submit. They don't know how to cooperate. They don't know how to problem solve. They don't know how to do anything but take butt pics. And this is the this is their center. So instead of the intimacy, you your relationship and your love and companionship and teamwork being the cake, and then the intimacy is just the icing on top of it. That's how it's supposed to be. But you choose to do it backwards, and you get backwards results. And this is the degradation of our nation. Oh, you got to live with one another to find out. Within three to six months, you'll know if you're compatible. Within three to six months. I'm pretty sure some of the women that watch me will know off top by just watching me. If, man, I'll marry that guy. Just being honest. Yeah, I think I can marry that guy. He's pretty strict, but yeah, he's my type. And you've never even met me. You're like, man, he's serving the Almighty. He's probably strict, you know. But, you know, I see, I see his YouTube. I see how his house is. His house is clean. His kids are clean. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's pretty legit. You will know. And you've never even met me. To know if I'm your type. So why do you need to live with someone for three years to figure out, oh, just in case. All that stuff just leads to fornication and more kids out of wedlock. Marry before you carry. Marry before you carry. Don't be carrying no man's seed and not, not, have, no, not have no guarantee of commitment. Um, and then the, the another one they use, oh, you need to experience the world before you get married. That's just another cop out. I want to be a hoe. Why can't you experience the world with your husband? Why can't you go to chase your degree and still date and, 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 and get married while you get your degree? Why do you have to experience? 
Anyone that says, oh, I need to find myself, that means they want to be a hoe. I need to experience the world. I need to be a hoe. I want to be a hoe first. I want to have my hot girl summer. I want to chase a lot of dudes, and then I'll settle down. You know, what What do you need to experience that's so... so I, I, I believe women should go to college, and they should have a world outside of high school for a couple of years. My personal I would want roughly 24, 23. My daughters get married and whatnot. After 20, they got four years. They went to school. They had fun. They played around, learned how to drive, do this, go on a vacation, went here. Yeah, not be a hoe. Not no hot girl summer, no. But I think that, yes, I, I get that to a certain extent. But not how these women say, oh, you got to experience first. No, that means you just want to be a hoe. You want to go to college and just be a hoe. You want to go to all these vacations with your friends and have one night stands and do all this and get it out your system. No, don't even worry about it. And then you wonder why I do with that a little bit. So don't let those excuses deter you. You know, don't let those excuses deter you. Uh, back to my thing with uh, uh, people without congregations and whatnot. I'm going to go real quick. I'll read the scripture real quick. And we're pretty much done. Uh, uh, John 3.16. For the Almighty so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'll read it. That way I don't paraphrase it off. All right, John 3, 16, For the Almighty so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever shall believe him shall not perish, but have shall everlasting life, right? So, Gospel John 3, 16. Gospel John 3, 16. Uh, I mean, not Gospel John, 1 John 3, 16, sorry. 1 John chapter 3 verse 16 it says hereby we perceive the love of the almighty we just read for the almighty so loved the world he gave his only begotten son because he laid down his life for us we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren and uh the brethren is outside of true he was united so there's brothers and sisters across the whole planet that i have not met yet but with that is if if you don't have a congregation and i don't know what your congregation believes and i don't know if you're living holy or not i i'm not gonna lay down my life for some sinner like, meaning if I see a brother and he's living holy, living clean, and he's at a different congregation, I got to believe I got to be willing to give my resources. Let this brother stay at my house. I got to be willing to die for this brother or this sister. And if I can't confirm your uh, confirm your uh, your certificates or your um, credentials by your congregation and what you believe, then I'm not going to call you a brother. Because you're without rule. You're without rule of law. You're without a watchman, especially you without a watchman, without a husband, and not understanding your husband, your father's rule. Oh, I'm really not calling you no sister. I'm not calling you no brother. Oh, I'm a brother. What kind? Oh, I don't really have. Man, I, I'm not calling you. I'm not willing to die for you. For some sinner, you're probably secretly smoking weed or telling lies or in fornication just because you wear fringes. I'm supposed to call you a brother. Oh, he's in truth or he's woke or not the woke that they say without whatever stuff i'm talking about, oh he's in true he knows he's a hebrew and this and this and, oh, i'm good bro i gotta be able to lay down my life for my brothers and sisters in the body like really living holy living just keeping the commandments of the most high and i don't call everyone brother that's why I'm, i keep telling you if they don't have a congregation i don't even recognize them like if you're looking for a congregation hey much patience everyone starts off either you came out of false church or you're looking for truth and you're trying to and you're reading the bible and, and all there's all these camps and all these congregations and what do yeah, I, I understand that. Totally understand. I'm dealing with the people that's not looking for a congregation. That say, oh, Christ is not with all world. Christ is the world and Christ is the church. And I, I don't need no congregation because I just need my Bible in Christ. And you'll see them type that. I don't need a congregation. I just got my Bible and I got Amashiach. And they, they say all that stuff. Most people get ready to burn in hell. There's only one way. And, and, and he didn't set up these watchmen. And he didn't give a commandment saying, obey them that have rule over you for they watch for your soul. One more scripture real quick. First Corinthians chapter 14. I'm long-winded today. Sorry. First Corinthians 
1 Corinthians chapter 14. We'll start at says 36. What came the word of the Almighty out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. He says, so all these people that says, oh, I don't need no congregation. Christ is my head. I just need my Bible, this and this and this. It says, you need to acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So when I say obey them that have rule over you, for they watch for your soul, submit yourselves unto them, consider their latter than congregations. That means you need a watchman. For you to obey those two scriptures in Hebrews, that requires you for you to have a watchman. And he says, that's the commandments of the Lord. So all these people saying they don't need a congregation, get ready to burn in hell. I'm, uh, that stuff, go ahead, get ready to burn in hell. Oh, I don't need no congregation. Okay, burn in hell. I know you don't, because you're going to hell. That's why you don't need one, because you're going to hell. Of course, you, anyone going to hell don't need one. I, I get it. I understand. I agree with you. Amen. Let it be so. Let it be so. So with all that said being done, keep standing. Don't drop standard. Shalom.